what they have done, but what is concerning to me initially are that the students called the I am Robert Strickler. My wife Joyce and I have been married for 53 years. Certainly one of the really important things in my life are our children and our grandchildren. I'm essentially a writer. I've been involved in communications and the media. I've been an avid fly fisherman for at least 40 or more years. I've been taking Prevagen on a regular basis for at least eight years. For me, the greatest benefit over the years has been that Prevagen seems to help me recall things and also think more clearly, have a crisper ability to remember and think through things. And I enthusiastically recommend Prevagen. It has helped me an awful lot. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Robert Strickler is a content contributor for Prevagen and real user based on a clinical study of subgroups of individuals. 
cognitively normal or mildly impaired. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Streaming on Fox Nation. Don't believe it. How it. Can these old flames find holiday magic in the most Christmassy place on earth? Do I see that how to make me laugh? Christmas at the Greenbrier. Streaming now exclusively on Fox Nation. Sign up now and get 50% off all yearly plans. Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, two American heroes, came from very different backgrounds, but were able to put their disagreements aside to accomplish a common goal. That story is chronicled in the best novel, The President and the Freedom Fighter, which has just been released in paperback. Joining us now is the author and Fox and Friends co-host Brian Kilmeade. Brian, you're up on the one day you get to sleep in. Welcome to Fox News Sunday. Uh, this is sleep again. Uh, it's not a 2.30 wake-up call. It's a little bit later, so for that, I'm thankful. Uh, but what I try to do with the paperback is bring up what happened just around the block from you. Uh, that, mon uh, uh, that monument that was dedicated by Frederick Douglass uh, in 10 years after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He didn't love the design, but the people that paid for it did. They were freed slaves. And they paid for it. He said, okay, I'll dedicate it with Ulysses S. Grant there. And then two years ago, they're trying to take it down into Massachusetts and took out a replica. So in doing history, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, the war on history. And that's mm -hmm. what's happening on a daily basis. So that's what I tried to add to the paperback this time. Well, and the book is all about how they came together. They had very different ideas about how to get there, but to end slavery. Thing that is being debated here in Washington now, which is very different views on how to get there, but agreement that the border is in real trouble. So we have this headline now from FoxNews.com. Senators Tillis and Sinema revive talks on potential immigration deal during lame duck session. Brian, the border is a mess. Any um, the hope in your mind that there is an appetite on both sides to actually get something done? I mean, when you can't get the president to even go there, when asked by Peter Ducey, why aren't you going to the border? you go to a border state, he says, that more important things to do. Doesn't that really say it all? Uh, because there is no interest in securing the border. Therefore, this, this is game over before it starts. I salute Tillis and Sentiment for saying, let's get something done. But to say that we're going to let dreamers stay, that's pretty much a given. Most people know if you come here at three and four, Democrats and Republicans are eventually going to get to allowing them to stay. But you know what's happened over the last year and a half, two years? brought dreamers with them. So now, a story that was somewhat contained when President Obama decided to, through an executive order, tell dreamers they can stay. Now, all of a sudden, it's more complicated because you've doubled the number that are in this country. And does anybody think this administration is serious about sealing the border? Does anyone understand that on December 12th, Title 42 disappears, which means they expect instead of 7,000, which is untenable, to go up to 15 to 18,000. We're already seeing the suicide last month, 14 this year. We had another one killed on Wednesday in pursuit of another illegal immigrant coming here. Until we get serious about stopping the, having security, which you know this, Shannon, you, you work there every day. Senator Schumer used to talk about having border security. You used to have Senator Joe Biden talk about border security. They have suddenly changed, and they think it's a great idea to let every country come and stay for free. Well, excuse me, we we'll give them a nice welcome package, some cash, some belongings, and we also give them a bus ride wherever they want to go. It's insane. No country does this. Well, and, and the difficult reality, too, is that we've tracked the numbers of people who are trying to come here who have also died, hundreds of them around the border or trying to get through these border crossings. So there are people impacted on all sides of this uh, and whether Washington gets anything done or not. I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, I, we also have you here to talk because you're an expert on all things soccer. Um, the World Cup has captured, uh, I'm told, half of the world's population is watching these games when they're on. Um, so we are down to the... the into next week we'll talk about that but in the meantime um reporter grant wall who is much beloved and well known as a reporter within the soccer community an american um passed away there very suddenly i listened to his podcast where he was talking about thursday that he'd been sick he had this terrible cough a lot of